going on guys it's cyberhorn 92 here hope everyone have a wonderful day so recently ycs harvard are already done there's a lot of deck lists some of them um have not given out um because like a lot of people probably want to keep their deck secret or probably um busy during the day and i'm here with who uh my name is noah sullivan all right and what did you do at the ycs harvard recently yeah huh? Uh, I got top 16 at YCS Hartford, piloting Flaunderies. Alright, alright. Um, so what, what made you want to play this deck besides Despia and Swordso? Just curious. Well, I thought that Flaunderies' engine was the best deck in the game if it could just survive till turn 3, because it has the best grind game mm -hmm. out of any deck I've ever seen ever. So that mm -hmm. was kind of what initially made me want to play the deck and also mm -hmm. reason number two is that i can play dimensional shifter which is the best card in the game that's true i, I totally understand on that part before we get into yeah. the uh, um into the deck profile do you want to give any shout outs yeah i'll give a shout out to my uh my friend justin tinker and my brother nathan sullivan we test a lot and um shout outs to everybody all the new hampshire Yu-Gi-Oh players that i go to locals with and test with so shout out to them all right for sure all right let's get um with the deck profile yeah, so my hand trap lineup for this list, I played three copies of Ash Blossom, three copies of Shifter, and two copies of Imperm. Um, so I felt like these eight were probably the best hand traps I could play. Um, they generically hit everything, so that's why I felt comfortable putting them in my main deck. Um, some additional going second cards I played on my list were three copies of Regeki. Um, I felt like this card was absolutely incredible against Sword Soul. I was clearing boards of Draco Berserker, Chi Shao, uh, Sinister and Blackout, all with just one, all just with one Regeki, and it was it was just stealing games for me left and right. Um, and then I also played one copy of Mystic Mind and Terraforming to round out my going second cards in the deck, so it was up to a total of thirteen. So I felt very comfortable with that. Uh, many of them were cards that I could draw as my sixth card or excavate off at any of my eight pots that I'm playing. So I felt like that also has a, a decent amount of synergy as well. Um, the Floandaris lineup was just pretty standard. Uh, three copies of Rabina, three copies of Eaglin, one Stree, one Toucan. Um, that's pretty standard lineup. Some people play two Stree, but I just personally opted to play one. Um, I also played one copy of Empin, uh, one Apex Avian, one Rise of the Mega Monarch. Many people do play two copies of Empin, but I opted to play only one copy because I actually didn't really want to draw this card. I wanted to, uh, all the cards in my hand to either be starters or going second cards to stop my opponent. And I really didn't want to have additional copies of Empin in my hand rather than it being a going second card. Um, yeah, so then I played the standard three copies of Advent Adventure, three copies of Map. Um, these are your standard six spells um, for the deck, and you shouldn't really deviate from that, from that ratio at all. Um, something unique about my deck is I am playing eight pot cards, so I do play the standard three copies of Prosperity and three copies of Duality, but I also am playing two copies of Pot of Extravagance. Um, I felt like this deck's we main weakness was consistency, so I wanted to help that as much as possible by playing uh, more copies of Pots. You will notice in my list that I am not playing the continuous spell Unexplored Winds, so I essentially removed one copy of Empin and the continuous spell for two additional copies of Pot of Extravagance. And I guess the theory on that was that Unexplored Winds isn't really a starter. And um, it only contributes more to your bricky hands. And you need to really be playing the game in order for Unexplored Winds to actually be useful. And I felt like the Flandries engine, when it's already playing the game, it's already winning most of those duels. So I felt like it was a win more card, and you really didn't need it to close out the games that you could have just closed out with the with the regular Flandries engine itself. Um, and then I also played one copy of uh, Dreaming Town, which is pretty standard. And yeah, that pretty much rounds out the main deck. And I also played the one copy of uh, the Barrier Statue of the Stormwinds, which was absolutely insane for me all weekend. For sure. um, if this thing, if this card stuck, I was just winning that winning that duel no matter what <laughs> there's sure. nothing anybody can do about it pretty much yeah no i feel you um i was surprised um would you play a second barrier statue or one was perfectly fine i found that the one was actually perfectly fine because i i actually found myself not necessarily searching the barrier statue all mm -hmm. the time i would i would play it safe when mm -hmm. i opened the map robina combo and i would actually mm -hmm. search a second copy of eaglin off the robina in case my first copy of eaglin got hit with an ash or an imperm Mm -hmm. That way I can still set up Mpin playing off their normal summon. When they normal summon, I can use map effect and normal the second Eaglin right from my hand. Mm -hmm. So I would only go for the barrier statue if 
Um, I had additional um, Flanderies little birds in my hand so that I could uh, have follow up in case my eaglin got stopped by an ash valer or imperm. Mm-hmm. Um, so one was perfect for me because one, once it stuck on the board, I was just either book of eclipsing their normal summon mm-hmm. um, with with the trap, or I was just rise of bouncing it. So mm-hmm. I never really found myself needing a second one to actually uh, win the duel. Yeah, for sure. Um, and also, before getting to your um, extra insight, I was surprised you don't play No Book of Moon. What what was the reason you chose not to play Dark Card? Yeah, so essentially the, the decision was either either to play Book of Moon or Regeki in the main deck. Mm-hmm. And I felt like Regeki could essentially clear boards mm-hmm. single-handedly, whereas Book of Moon um, was more of a one-for-one trade, I felt like. And, mm-hmm. and Flandries doesn't have many... Um, removal cards in its in its main engine outside mm-hmm. of Ryza. Mm-hmm. So if, so if your Ryza gets stopped, you really don't have any other ways of removing threats from the board. Whereas Bo- Book of Moon doesn't necessarily Book of Moon certainly takes away the threat, but it doesn't remove that body from the board. So I would have to deal with it at, at some point later on in the duel, whereas Regeki just clears it completely. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Makes so sense. that's why I opted to choose the three three main deck to three Regeki. Yeah, that's pretty smart. And it was pretty smart that like Mystic Mind, that, that card was the MVP like through Top Cut. Like you would use. Oh sword. yeah, one hundred percent. And that with the uh, with the uh, the Brave package sort of falling out of favor, uh-huh. um, with it only being played with punks essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, Mystic Mind just stuck on the. <laughs> true free win on the board and especially in game one when, when we, yeah a game one you could just drop mystic mind on people and it it was kind of a free win yep that's true that's true all right would you like to go to the side or extra it's up to you yeah we'll go to the side deck uh first so first off i played three copies of retaliating c so the the theory on this card was that it just destroys despia because you can chain it to any spell that includes an effect to special summon a monster. Mm-hmm. So you would chain it to brand infusion and it would summon itself. And now all the materials for brand infusion get banished instead. And mm-hmm. it's effectively a macrocosmos while it remains a face up on the field. Mm-hmm. So it was essentially my fourth, fifth and sixth copy of shifter against despia. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason why I had to play this card is because they, their play was to dump Necroworld Banshee off of the Branded mm-hmm. Fusion. They could activate Zombie World on me, which mm-hmm. completely destroys my deck because I'm not allowed to tribute someone un- under Zombie World. Mm-hmm. Um, so the fear on Retailing C was that it stopped that play and it provided me an insane floodgate against um, against Despia. Yeah. And I was also playing three copies of Cosmic Cyclone and three copies of Evenly Matched for for back row matchups essentially, but also Cosmic came in came in clutch against Sky Striker multiple times, outing their Mystic Mind, banishing their multi roll. It was pretty. It was pretty good. A lot of lists I see play Twin Twisters, but mm-hmm. um, Cosmic Cycle and banishing the Spell Trap was definitely MVP for me. Yeah. Um, and evenly matched. Also, I, I was bouncing back and forth between between Lightning Storm and evenly matched, but mm-hmm. I I wanted something that would clear both the monsters and the spells and traps because mm-hmm. even something as simple as a as a set infinite and permanence could potentially stop my turn if it's used on Robina or Eaglin at the right time. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to have a card that would that would force them to clear those cards so they would keep their engine mm-hmm. after resolving evenly matched. Mm-hmm. So I felt like evenly matched was better in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I played uh, three copies of Dimensional Barrier mm-hmm. in my list. So I was bouncing back and forth between Harpy's Featherstorm and mm-hmm. Dimensional Barrier. Mm-hmm. And I, I really felt that D-Barrier was definitely the, the move for this for this event in particular. Mm-hmm. Featherstorm is definitely a great card, but you can get stuck in these funky situations if, you, mm-hmm. if you're a Rapina get stopped and you're and you're left with just a water wing beast on the board and your harpy's feather storm isn't live yeah and um and that's one of the problems with this deck is it is it bricks it doesn't open optimally or your opponent will hand trap you and you're stuck with a very suboptimal board and feather storm maybe it might be a dead card when you really needed that card to be live to, to help you survive so you could play next turn because because the goal of Flandry is just to survive to turn three. So if you can just skip their turn, mm-hmm. survive, and then all your birds just keep coming back every single turn because they just go to the banish pile, you keep adding them back, you can really out-resource your opponent very, very quickly if you can just get to turn three, yeah. I felt like. That's true. And then, um, yeah, so I felt like the barrier was absolutely insane for me. Uh, Despian Sword Soul just crumbled to this card, so that's, that's basically why I chose to play it. Yep. Um... So also for more going first cards, I also played the one copy of Called By. I felt like it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the one copy of uh, Dimensional Fisher. So this card stops Droll and Lockbird because Droll and Lockbird has to be sent to the graveyard for cost. So um, so it was kind of a double-edged sword card. It provided an insane floodgate that Combo Duck really couldn't play through 
a D fisher. And then um, it also stopped drilling Lockbird, which is like the hand trap that hurts me the most. And then I also played the one copy of Macrocosmos. Um, I opted to play this card because it stops. It plays around the uh, your opponent holding Forbidden Droplet mm-hmm. for you to flip up your trap and normal summon your bird. Mm-hmm. Um, people would hold the droplet so they could hit so they could hit my normal summon effect, the barrier statue, and Mpin all with just one droplet. So this the Macrocosmos at least stops them from being able to even activate droplets on me or at least they have to chain it directly to the macrocosmos and then mm-hmm. and then even if they have the droplets uh macrocosmos provides an insane floodgate that they have to deal with and try to combo through so yes um so it was kind of another double-edged sword card i felt like it, it kind of covered for my weakness but it also um was a stall card in case i bricked so i could mm-hmm. potentially get top deck into a bird and get back into the game dang makes sense makes sense so yeah that's yeah um, That's pretty much up. But before we go into the um, extra deck, do you know how many games have you won with Dimension of Fisher and Macro? Just curious. Um, so I think my round nine match that secured my spot into day two, D, uh, my opponent revealed a Droll and Lockbird in their hand in game three. So the D Fisher was just absolutely incredible for me in that scenario. And um, there were multiple times where my opponent would hand trap me mm-hmm. um, and stop my play. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so I'd be left with just like an eaglet on board or something. And, and then I'll just flip up Macrocosmos and they, and they just wouldn't be able to play. And then I could just play next turn and Dang. kill them. So it makes sense. Makes so sense. I felt like, <laughs> like, yeah, so I felt like they just covered my, um, my weaknesses pretty well. That's true. That's true. And then the extra deck. Yeah. So for the extra deck, I played, um, uh, two copies of each of the cards required for the Zeus package, just because I'm playing extra. And then um, I played a bunch of random other links, like Link Freebo, um, uh, Relinquished Anima, Phoenix, Nightma- uh, Nightmare Unicorn, and Access Code Talker. Um, these are just generic links I felt like could come up. Phoenix was technically to hit Zombie World if you didn't have an out to it. And then um, Access Code to, to Link Climb up through Unicorn to, cl- to uh, get over big bodies and clear boards that they came up. None of this ever really came up. None of my action deck came up just because I was playing so many pot cards and everything was getting banished very, very quickly. Um, and I played a bunch of Maximus cards as well. So the extra deck didn't come up much, but in theory it could have with the Zeus package and having all my birds be level one. So it was there just in case, but it didn't come up. For sure, for sure, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, thank you for the deck profile. Of congrats on top sixteen again. That was your first event, right? Ever? Yeah, this was my first YCS ever. I played in a few regionals before, but um, this is my first YCS. So I was pretty excited with the result. Wow, that's crazy! Congrats again, and will we be seeing you at Thank um, you. national um in Chicago coming up? Yeah, I'm, ho- I'm hoping to get make it out there. So I'm excited for that event. All Thank right, you for sure. Anytime, your boy Starborn ninety two is signing out. Peace.